Mark Matson, founder and CEO of Matson Money and Euro Pacific Capital President Peter Schiff. Mark, I'll begin with you. You know, Wall Street is littered with investors who thought they could outsmart the markets by converting to cash ahead of the election, saying, oh, we're going to have a big drop and then we'll get in. Uh, too late. They missed out on some serious gains here. What did you do and what are you doing right now? Well, you're, you're absolutely right, Liz. Uh, when, the, when the crash came from the pandemic, market dropped 20, 30 percent, and you saw a mad dash to cash at the bottom of the market. Over $1 trillion uh, left equities into fixed income, uh, $5 trillion total dollars, and then the market came raging back, and many people missed, uh, missed the boat and didn't get back in, only to now get back in and making the mistake of dumping it into large U.S. stocks, uh, tech stocks, These, this has been elevated very high. What we were doing is rebalancing, selling off the uh, uh, equities while they were uh, selling off fixed income, buying equities while they were low, and diversifying into small and diversifying into small value and international. Not getting myop myopically choked in and focused in on those large U.S. in the 2000s, a massive tech and large bubble. We don't want to uh, exacerbate problems in dumping money in bubbles. Okay, one thing we do know at the moment, uh, Peter, is that we have uh, we have a red Senate and we have a blue House of Representatives. Proceed. How are you investing around that reality? Well, first of all, I think today's rally is more of a head fake. I think the market is substantially overvalued and it is headed lower. I mean, look what's happening uh, to the regional banks. Uh, that index is down almost 7% on the day. That really tells the story. And look at the Russell 2000. It's negative. It's not participating in this rally. That's what's telling you about the, the U.S. economy. Yeah, but it look, had a huge run-up yesterday. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's good that the, um, that the, the Senate is going is to stay in Republican hands. But unfortunately, that's not enough to save the economy from higher taxes, big increases in government spending, more regulation that will be issued uh, by the president on businesses, and much larger deficits. Uh, so the Fed is going to be monetizing bigger deficits. Uh, this is bad for the economy. It's inflationary. It's, it's, uh, so the Fed is going to be monetizing bigger deficits. Uh, this is bad for the economy. It's inflationary. It's, it's, bad, it's bad for some of these emerging markets outside the United States. Look at commodities, raw materials, uh, precious metals. Tra uh, inflation hedges and non-U.S. investments are the way to go. And I've been positioning uh, for this trade for many, many years, and I think you're going to see it play out in a spectacular manner over the next few years. Uh, Mark Matson, what, what do you think about that? I mean, Peter has been right on gold. It has had an incredible run up over the past, uh, I want to say, eight, nine months. But do you see any miners? Do you see anything that reflects what you're doing for your clients in what he just talked about? Yeah, well, we prescribe to efficient market theory, meaning all the knowable and predictable information is already in the price today. Therefore, random and unpredictable events change the market going forward. So we don't get trapped up into making short term forecasts. If, if your portfolio needs a forecast to work, it's already broken. You should build your portfolio for the next 15 or 20 years, not the next 15 or 20 minutes. But relative to the international diversification, many people have totally missed the boat. There are over 45 different markets you can be in, uh, including those emerging markets, over 81 countries that we're invested in. Uh, and, and most people are completely dumping all their money into large and tech stocks. And if you're going to protect your money, you want to have high quality short term fixed income. So if interest rates do ramp back up, you're not going to lose principal and you're going to stay high quality and not take a, a hit if uh, you have uh, defaults on, on bonds, which you could have in, if the market crashes. Peter, Peter, what do you assess from all that we have seen over the past 24 hours and what under under which scenario do you see the markets taking a major hit, whether it is President Trump who holds on to his seat or Joe Biden getting into the presidency? Which is it? Well, I think, you know, the U.S. economy is a disaster and I think it's going to become a, a bigger disaster uh, in, in, in the years ahead. And the market is overpriced. It's been propped up uh, by Fed stimulus and the markets assume that stimulus will gonna, is going to continue to to prop the markets up indefinitely. It's not going to happen. Ultimately, it's going to destroy the dollar. And you know, it's not just a loss of principle that people have to be concerned about. It's the loss of purchasing power of their principle. So even if you don't lose any money, if you're invested in bonds, uh, but the dollar loses its purchasing power, those are huge losses. And investors need to mitigate that risk. 
The inflation tax is going to be very, very heavy, and it's going to decimate, I think, the portfolios of many uh, potential and, and current retirees. That is a real risk, and I think people are, are not cognizant of that, and their portfolios are not mm -hmm. prepared uh, to, to guard against that risk. Um, what would you be staying away from, Mark? Anything in particular that you say, yeah, we don't touch that? Because, look, big tech has had an incredible run-up, but very, very true that, that it's starting to look quite frothy and overvalued. It's, it is an overbought trade, some people say. Well, if you look at tech stocks going back to 1995 to 2000, they were up 44% a year for five years in a row, and then they lost 75% of all their value in an instant and people's portfolios were devastated. Mm -hmm. So while we're not avoiding it, we're not doubling down and betting on it uh, like so many people are doing. Huh. And the same thing is true for large U.S. stocks. We're staying away from, in the fixed income, high-yield junk bonds and long-term bonds because they do get destroyed. But look, hey, stocks have been a great hedge against inflation. Historically, inflation's at 3%. Historically, large company stocks at 10%. That's a 7% real return in advance or ahead of inflation. So historically, if you're worried about inflation, you should own stocks and own them long term, not just for four years. Yeah, but not not overpriced Peter, one U.S. Last stocks. Question. And, Go ahead. And, and, yes, I said not overpriced U.S. stocks and inflation is going to be a lot higher than three percent. Mm -hmm. Peter, what was your best investment this year as far as equities are concerned? I know you like gold, but which stock name just hit it out of the park for well, you? Well, it's, it's, it's probably the gold mining stocks. Those were probably among my, my best gainers. Uh, you know, they had pretty spectacular runs coming off the, uh, the March lows. Uh, but, but a lot of my stocks, like I own a lot of uh, pharmaceutical stocks that are having big days. My China names are doing extremely well. I guess it's a relief uh, that Trump most likely did not win. So that's uh, caused some of these Chinese stocks to, uh, to have big gains today. But I think, you know, basic materials, any inflation hedges, I think, you know, I've taken a hit this year on the energy stocks. We've added to those positions. And I think that ultimately you're going to see a big rebound in the price of oil, uh, particularly if a Biden administration gets aggressive and undermines uh, domestic production, uh, which will limit uh, the supply of oil. Uh, but I think as the dollar weakens, you're going to see oil prices following other commodity prices much, much higher. And so I think those represent pretty good right. value opportunities now. And those stocks pay some pretty good dividends. And uh, those dividends will improve as oil prices rise, and they'll be pretty good inflation hedges for a lot of people. But I think the international oil companies uh, offer better value than the domestic. Peter, Mark, both of you, I know you both well for many, many years. You started with zero, and you have become really successful, and there are different paths to the top of the investing mountain. Thanks so much for sharing yours with us.